Seven fifteen. Correct. Oh my gosh, time to go. I, you guys are so great because honestly, before we started the video, I'm like, what are we gonna do for fifteen minutes without music? <laughs> <laughs> we we flew right by it. You guys are awesome. Okay, welcome to Let's Make Art. We paint a different watercolor project every single week. We give you a tutorial, and if you want supplies, if you don't want supplies, the stuff is totally free. You can just like watch and join us. We yeah. love everybody. We want you to paint. We don't care where you get your painting stuff. So this is what we are doing tonight. The barn owl. All right, let's move on you guys. Okay. Um, this is Molly here painting with us. She's painted with us before. Wonderful. I'm so glad to have her. She is also Brock's wife. So if you think I'm married to Brock, you're wrong. You're wrong. This is, that's his wife. If you think I'm married to Keenan, you're wrong. Also wrong. Also wrong. Um, Keenan <laughs> is doing video. He is going to be in the background talking, and I'll randomly ask him for things. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be great. Uh, we are using <coughs> Ashley Young. I went to art school. Ashley, good to see you. Hey, girl, miss you. Okay. We have four steps with this owl. No, we have five steps. <laughs> Shoot, That's I think I five. five. I think five. I wrote down five, but I for some reason thought there were six. We're moving on. Step one: we are going to do the feathers right here. So we're going to outline the feathers. Step two: we're going to do like the this colorful wash here on the feathers. Step three: we're going to do the face of the owl. Are you doing overhead cam right now? I am. Okay, great. I just realized I wasn't looking at the camera no, front ways. You. Okay, we're gonna do the head. Step four, we're gonna go back into those tail feathers and refine them and give them form. And then step five, we're doing speckles and details. There were six. How did I miss that? Oh, I probably paused it. It's okay, it'll be fine. Step six is details, I'm assuming. Details. We're good. <laughs> it's always the last thing for the last step, so we're fine. Okay. Now we are going to do our warm-ups. Should we outline first? I, I feel like there's never a way we do this. Let's... It's only been a year. I know, it's been a while <laughs> since I've done this. Okay. <laughs> okay, no, it's okay. Let's do our warm-ups first, and then we'll outline. But before we do our warm-ups, we are going to do our oath. Okay? Okay. So everybody raise your right hand. And please repeat after me. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. I promise to have fun. I promise to have fun. Okay, thank you. Um, I like starting off with that oath because sometimes when we're starting something that maybe we're not comfortable with, we get really scared, especially with art, and then we get like afraid to make marks. And don't go in with fear, you guys. It's fine. It's just water and paper and paint. And if you don't like it, you can just throw it away and start another one. Or let your child use it as scrap. Yes. That's where mine go. Good. She loves that. Cute. Okay. <laughs> So we'll start off with our warm-ups and then we'll do our outline and get painting. So for our warm-ups, what I want us to practice is we are going to practice the wet on wet. Brock asked oath before warm-ups. <laughs> Brock, I change it every time. I really, <laughs> you guys, my goal this year is to be organized. I'm gonna like make a schedule so you know what to expect. Okay. It's not a big deal, Brock. Yeah, Brock, calm down, okay? You did fine last week. So. We are going to start off by getting our brush wet. And if you are new to watercolor and you're not entirely sure how much water to have on your brush, when you pick up water, you always kind of want to hit it off the edge of the cup. If you don't, then this is usually too much water and you'll start getting puddles on your paper and you don't want that. So Kristen asks, how do you trace the owl? After we do the warm ups, I'll show you guys how to trace that owl. So don't stress. So uh, I want you to get an area wet, just using water. And then I want you to pick up some paint and just drop in color in that wet area and just see how that spreads. And 
and you can go along the edge if you want. But here's the thing with watercolor is the water and the paint, they have a mind of their own and they're gonna wanna move and do things and the best thing to do is to let it go. You gotta let them do their thing. They wanna do most of the work, so just let them do it. And this is where it's really fun because every painting you do is actually gonna turn out different because there's always that kind of surprise or accidental element with watercolor. So if it, the idea of that stresses you out, you need to accept it, okay? Just letting, letting the paint do its thing is gonna be a big part of um, watercolor. It's the best part, I think. So we're just gonna drop it in there and you're just gonna let it spread. You can do a couple different colors, but this is how we're gonna do a lot of the, the wash on our body, like on these feathers right here. So I just want to get you guys comfortable with kind of like that technique of just dropping in color when it's wet. The other thing you can do is sometimes you drop in some color and it doesn't spread. So don't be afraid to just kind of like move it around a little bit. You can blend things out. So you drop it in and then you just take your damp paintbrush and move it, move it around. Could one of you ladies move those two cups to your left? Yes, perfect, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Nicole asks if there's any tips on how to keep the watercolor dark. So I'm assuming the color strong and dark. Uh, you usually want to have more paint than water on your paintbrush. And if there's an area that you're trying to darken and it's already wet, sometimes you've got to let it dry and then do another layer on top of it to get a darker color. If you keep on trying to work on it while it's wet, it's just going to kind of get uh, muddy and not get that dark color that you're looking for. So. Now we are going to do just some thin lines. So I just want you to take your two and you're gonna do long thin lines across your paper. And that's because these tail feathers that we're doing, we're actually gonna outline each of them. And so I want you to just practice doing thin lines. So what I like to do is I'll get my brush wet, I'll hit it off the side so it's just damp. I'll pick up some paint and then I kind of like to go back and forth on it like this because then it, it gets rid of excess paint and water and it also kind of pinches my bristles together. So it's easier to get a thinner line. And then I just go, I'm gonna have a vertical hold. So it's just gonna be the tip. And then I go across my page. Now I do not plant my hand. It usually just grazes my paper. And that's because if I plant my hand, uh, my, I'm limited in terms of how far my line can go because our wrist can only move so much. So that's why I like to actually move the, my hand with my arm or my shoulder as opposed to my wrist. And that way you can get as long of a line as you need. Now our feathers are only gonna be about this long, but just kind of practice that thin technique. Now, if you're going and you get this kind of texture oh, where it's kind of rough, that is your paintbrush telling you that you need some moisture. So you just have to get it a little bit damp and then it should be a smooth line. So vertical hold, move with your arm, a little bit of paint and water. Okay. Kathy asks if I found that liquid watercolor doesn't spread as well as tube or pan paints. I haven't found that. I actually, in my experience, I like the liquid more. I think they tend to spread a little bit better. Um, but again, totally preference. And it also really depends on the brand of tube and pan paints you're using. So it's it, there's just so many brands and different variations within that brand that it's hard to say like for sure tube paints always spread better. There's, there's no way to say that, but I just prefer liquid and that's why we use it. But don't feel like you have to use it. If you have pan or two paints, um, play with them, use those. Uh, we're big over here on not judging people on what they use. Just use whatever is comfortable for you, even if it's just 
the paints from Walmart. That's totally fine. Just, just use what works for you. Okay. I don't think there's anything we really, okay, one more, one more warm up. We're gonna do a value change. And that's because a lot of the times I like to put dark color down first and then just use water to spread it around. So that's a technique I use a lot. So what you wanna do is you wanna get your round six and get it wet, hit it off the side, and then pick up a color, it can be any color. And I want you to lay that color down just in like a rectangle shape or whatever shape and then rinse off your brush a little bit and then spread that color to the right or left. If you're left-handed, that might be easier. And you'll notice that every time you pick up water, your color is actually getting lighter. And that's how we do a value change. So this is my darkest value. And then as I add water, the values get lighter over here. And this is where my lightest value is. Maybe I should do it in black. Jenny asks if this is the Molly. Uh, yes. I see you, Jenny. I see you. <laughs> this is the Molly. She's so good at puns. I love having her on. Okay, so now I'm doing it with black, so it's a little bit easier to see, but you, every time you add water, it's gonna lighten that color, and that's because it's just making the paint itself more transparent. So you're actually seeing the white of the paper better or more. So we have the dark and then we have it and then it goes off to the light. Okay, now we're gonna outline. <laughs> Let's do this. So if you've never used um, uh, graphite paper before, this is what I use personally to transfer images when I'm doing like custom pet portraits and just basically any custom work. Um, what you're going to do is you're gonna take your outline. Can they see Molly? You can. Okay, great. You can just keep going, Molly. Okay. So you're gonna tape your outline down to your paper using blue painter's tape or Wasi tape or just any softer tape. If you only have regular tape, then I just stick it on my jeans a few times to get pick up some fabric because then it won't rip my paper. So I tape my outline down and then there should be graphite paper in your kit or your box and unfold it. And there's two sides to it. There's a side that's darker. That's the side that actually has graphite paper. And then there's the back side. So you're gonna do graphite paper down onto the paper. And then you're just gonna start drawing how Molly is. So any marks you make, and you don't, you can use a pen, you can use a pencil, you can use the back of your paintbrush. You can use whatever you have. Any mark you make, it's gonna make onto your paper. Now, a word of caution. Watercolor is transparent, which means you are going to see pencil lines through it. So if you're pressing really hard getting that trace down, you might wanna check and see how dark your line is showing up on your paper. If it's super dark, then you are going to see those outlines through the painting. So I always encourage people to go as light as they possibly can. And then that way it's not distracting from the painting as you start adding color. So, um, and then to go lighter, you just are going to do a really soft pressure. That's how you get a lighter um, line. Sometimes what I do actually is use like a felt tip marker because that in itself is like a softer push than yeah. like a pen or a pencil. And so it automatically will come lighter. That's just, other people have suggested using colored pens and pencils so you know where you've already outlined. Um, I'm struggling with that right now. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Odds are you guys are probably gonna miss a little line somewhere. Don't stress about it. The point of the outline is just to give you general ideas of where things could go. It's not a coloring book. We're not following this exactly and coloring in the lines. It's just to give you guys, um, it's basically a reminder to be like, oh wait, there should be a shadow or a highlight or the owl should end around here or something. So don't stress about it. Um, the other thing to note is graphite paper is reusable, so don't throw it away after one use. It actually gets better with use because then it doesn't get as dark when you're outlining. The graphite kind of wears off over time. And so like the graphite paper I use at home is probably like three years old, three or four years old. So just keep on using it as you can. Okay. Oh, somebody had a question about the butcher tray. Um, the butcher tray, if you order the butcher tray from us, it is supposed to be raised in the middle. 
I put my paint along the edges and then I use the middle for mixing. So give yourself a little bit of space in between the colors so they don't go together. And you don't have to have this much painting on your tray. I do a lot because I'm usually sharing with somebody, but usually like a little squirt will work and you can always put more on if you run out. And then, yeah, give them some space apart. And then I just pull colors to the middle and that's where I kind of blend and, and mix. Um, there are a lot of comments, but I think they're kind of answering each other. So if there's something I missed, let me know, but I think we're okay. How's your outline coming? Uh, it is. I think it's good. Yeah, I think I just missed this little guy here. Also, I've been seeing these paintings that you guys have done from the video and they have, they're turning out so good. This, I love this owl project. You guys are just doing awesome with it. It's, All it's really fun to see. Different backgrounds. They put them like, yes, different, someone had a baby with theirs. They did a baby with their yeah. owl. That's cute. cute. I didn't see that one. A human baby? A human baby? <laughs> that can't be right. No, like a little <laughs> cotton ball with eyes. There's one that I saw that had like a green background that was really beautiful. So, um, da -da -da. let's get started. Sorry if I missed a question, but all of these comments are like really long. <laughs> and I just want to start painting, so that's what we're going to do. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start with the very first step, which is we're going to look at these tail feathers and start putting in those lines and shadows. So we're going to start with our round two, actually. And just like how we did with our warm up, you get it wet, you hit it off the side, and then you're going to pick up some black paint. And also these paints are reusable. So uh, if they dry, you just add water to them, bring them back up. They're good as new. So don't feel like you have to rinse your palette every single time it dries. You don't have to. Okay. So I'm going to start going along the feathers and I, I have a nice thin line here and I'm going to do a vertical hold. So it's going to be a thinner and I'm just going to start following these outlines. So try and get them nice and thin. If some of them end up thicker than others, it's really not a big deal. Don't stress out. We're actually gonna blend out a lot of these lines anyway. So this is just kind of putting in our initial shadow for these feathers. How are we doing on YouTube, Keenan? We're doing very well. Okay. I feel like I gave a lot of information while we were outlining. Sorry if that was a lot. <laughs> I tend to talk fast when I'm like, you have to say all of these things. Then I talk really fast. Sorry, I'll try and slow down. You're doing great. So thank you, Keenan. Thank you so much. I was gonna say that, but I, you know, I was very focused. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was like, I was gonna say that, but I was trying to pay attention to all of the things you were telling me to do. <laughs> <laughs> All these things you just said, yeah, that. Okay, so I outlined my tail feathers, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to kind of rinse off my brush, get it damp, and I'm just going to kind of blend out some of, the, some of this black, because here's kind of the tricky thing with feathers or all of these lines is we want to have a dark area to be the shadow but we don't really want outlines so usually when i outline something i then blend it out now i'm blending down from where that outline is however i'm not going all the way down to the next line because i want to leave some white space for the highlight so i'm just kind of blending halfway down from the line now if your line isn't moving or blending very well first of all don't stress out it's totally okay sometimes if you let things dry too long it doesn't blend and we're actually going to cover up most of this anyway with color with some browns with the sepia that we have oh did i go over colors no the three colors we're using are black sepia and uh yellow i think it's lemon yellow yes lemon yellow those are the three Sorry. Okay, so you're just kind of blending out. Remember to leave some white space in between 
because we want to highlight. Whenever you're trying to show layers or, or three-dimensional, so we don't want all of these layers to feel flat, like they're one surface. We want to be able to seem like there's multiple layers within that. And in order to achieve that, we have to have a highlight and we have to have a medium value and a shadow, even when it's gathered like this. So we're leaving the white area between the feathers um, to act as our highlight. And we're not going to touch a lot of that. Sarah, I've got a question on YouTube. Okay. Uh, almost a comment question. I'm not afraid. Wait, is your mic on? <laughs> We're working on keeping Keenan's mic on when he talks. My microphone is now on. <laughs> His microphone is now on, and he's going to ask a question. The question was answered by another person, <laughs> so never mind. <laughs> never mind. Somebody Thank answered you it. Enjoy the painting. <laughs> Well, it's funny because we have Keenan mic'd up, so when there's questions and stuff, but also like when it's on the entire time, you get a lot of background noise. So much background noise. So we turn it off when he's not talking, but then we forget to turn it on when he is, and then people can't hear, and then they get mad, and then they're like commenting like, you shouldn't have side conversations if we can't hear you. Sorry, guys. We're trying. We're trying our best. My microphone is on, and I would like to apologize. <laughs> Keenan, you're doing great. Look, what that looks like an animal. You see that? No, what kind of animal? Like an owl? No, like what's a, the oh. largest rodent on earth? What's that called? Oh, from Princess Bride? <laughs> Not the the rodent rodent. Of, or, out, or <laughs> unusual size, the rent or whatever. Yeah. I'll think of it. Okay, okay. A possum. I'm trying to think of ro rodents. I don't like rodents. Oh, is it a marsupial? Yeah. Dang. Molly, glad you're here. <laughs> to correct your <laughs> zoology. Capybara? Capybara? Capybara, yeah. Megan. That's what it looks like. Thank you. Or capybara. Where is the, like I that. can't see it at all. This is like the nose. Oh. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I, can't, I don't even really know what a capybara <laughs> looks like, so. Yeah. They're in Florida now, just Becky asked, when will the butcher tray and brushes be back in stock? Very soon, Becky. We're, we'll let you know later this week. We actually will have a very strong idea of what we have going on. So just be patient with us. We had that crazy growth, but we are working on getting more. You keep blending and I haven't touched mine. Is that okay? What do you mean? You just, you've been painting and I'm... I feel like I'm done. No, everybody goes at a different okay, space, well. pace. Yeah, don't stress. You could be done before me. You could be done way after me. That's okay. Everybody <laughs> paints stuff. <laughs> R-O-U-S's. That's what I was thinking of. Yes. Rodents of unusual size. <laughs> that was okay. literally my first thought. Yeah. Because I don't know like real those, animals. Those largest rodents. I'm like, obviously, <laughs> from the Princess Bride. Okay. You guys, that was step one. Good job. You're doing great. Uh, now we're going to move on to step two. So we're going to do this like really gorgeous area, which is these feathers on top right here. And this is where um, we're going to do water first and then drop in color. So I'm just going to take water and start filling in this kind of feathered area. I'm not going to do this chunk. I'm just going to kind of go to this wing and over here too. Karina says, uh, and Erica says, I don't think R-O-U-S, I don't think they exist. I'm assuming they're talking about the R-O-U-S's. Yes. Well, that's, you're right. That's true. <laughs> I was going to say they're wrong. They're I've wrong. i it in a movie. Is your mic on? Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> After everything you say, I'm just going to ask, is your, mic, is your on? mic on? Is your mic on? Okay, so I'm getting this nice and wet. Now you basically want a thin layer of water. You don't want a puddle. If you have a total puddle where you can see that it's just sitting there, when you drop in color, it's just gonna stay, it's not gonna spread. It's kind of a balance. You have to do it a couple of times. Don't stress, just kind of play with it. Now I'm gonna pick up some brown and I'm gonna start dropping it in. It's gonna be random and you see how it's just starting to spread beautifully. It's gorgeous. <laughs> Now, what I want you to keep in mind as you're adding this color is I want you to leave white spaces in between these feathers. So I'm also gonna do drops of yellow 
I'm going to mix with the brown, get some yellow, and you can also mix the brown with the black. But all the while, I'm dropping it in and still leaving some white chunks in there. Now this is just like a fun way, and this is why I love watercolors. You can use these techniques, these wet on wet techniques that really communicate texture, but you don't have to go in and paint every single feather. It's, I, I, I love it so much. So some people paint differently than me where they like to detail every single area. I think it's really fun to let the water and the color play in some areas. And usually places like this, we kind of have that freedom because we just kind of have this huge area of color going on, but still in order to communicate form, that's why we leave white spaces in there. And also the feathers themselves have some white areas and they have some dark browns. So we wanna have a variation of color. I'm gonna start doing some dark brown here. Oh my gosh, everyone's saying words from that movie now, as you wish, <laughs> inconceivable. Inconceivable. <laughs> That was one of my favorite movies when I was younger. My mom said that she knew every word to it before she sat down and watched it because she would like put it on and then like go cook dinner or something. And I would just uh, sit and watch it. I loved it so much. <laughs> it's a good one. Sally says ignore the people that get mad. Sally, thank you. <laughs> I will ignore the people that get mad. You know, that kind of reminds me of, I think the last video um, someone commented like, um, like we don't care about you talking, like just get to the painting. And, um, first of all, <laughs> if you don't like me, then this is probably not the YouTube channel for you because I do a lot of talking. Second of all, sometimes you got to sit through my stories because I'm giving you stuff for free and I feel like that's a fair trade off. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, I'll teach you all that I know you might have to listen to stories about cute doctors in the ER. I 100% agree. <laughs> Great. Don't get me started. Great. Just... You have a lot of stories about cute doctors in ER, Molly? I don't want to talk about it here. <laughs> okay, moving on. <laughs> Molly doesn't want to share her I stories. I don't want to move on. <laughs> there are some great stories. <laughs> okay, so we're still kind of dropping in color that things are, colors are blending and it's getting kind of messy and that's okay, we like it. We love it when art does this, right? This is the fun part. So just keep on going. I'm gonna put in some darker brown. And everybody's is going to look different, so don't feel like mine, yours has to look exactly like mine. I don't want it to. Make it your own. Put in your own colors wherever you want. And I guarantee this one is going to look different from the example, from the two other I've painted in videos. And that's kind of how it should be, you know? <laughs> oh, people are so nice. They're like, that's why I'm here. I love the talking. It's Thank like you. Chatting with friends. It is. Thanks, guys. It's our community. I hope I say this name right, but on YouTube, Geraldine says, I totally agree with you, Sarah. They can go somewhere else. I enjoy your stuff. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, when I read that, I, I thought that was so funny. I'm like, man, if you don't like me talking, then this is not for you. Because it's a straight hour of me talking. It's like whenever <laughs> they introduce like new medications on, it's like, this may not be right for you if you have any of these things. <laughs> <laughs> If you're irritated with me not knowing the names of things, this is not for you. <laughs> if you're irritated. <laughs> I'm particularly excited about the one we're releasing tomorrow with the math problem that we struggle with. <laughs> Listen, all right, I'm not great at math, but I can paint. I can, I can paint real good. <laughs> okay, so I'm feeling good about my feathers. I got lots of different colors in there and I have different values. So I have highlights, I have some medium values, and then I mixed some black in there for some dark values. So just have a mixture in there with your owl. Sorry, I abruptly stopped talking in the middle of a sentence, but <laughs> I needed to add some color. Okay, so that's looking really good, Molly. 
Thank you. You're welcome. You uh, taught me how to do this. <laughs> so that's it. That's, that's step two. We did our color wash. And now we are going to move on to step three, which is the face. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this dark brown that I mixed. And to mix dark brown, you just mix the sepia and the black together. If it's too black, add more brown. If it's not dark enough, add more black. That's it. Simple. Simple. You guys can do this. Okay. Now I'm going to go along. There's like a circle around the face of the owl. That's what that is. I was going to say feather, and I'm like, that's not right. So I'm just going to go along and kind of put in this color. I'm still using my round six because I feel confident getting a thin line with my six. However, if you don't, then just switch over to the um, two and it might be easier for you to get that thin line. So I'm just kind of going along with that, putting that in and then you're going to rinse your brush and blend. Now the reason that we're blending a lot of this out is because sometimes if we just leave it dark like this without doing any kind of softening, it's going to start looking um, outliney and it's going to start looking like blocky. And we want things to transition because usually it's, that's how we see things. It's, we're not hard lines, we're transitions of values. So usually when I put... That's so deep. <laughs> is that? Is that yes. deep? Life lesson. <laughs> We're not hard lines, we're transitions of values. Always transitioning. That could be the next quote. Next quote. T-shirts are T-shirts coming. Are coming. <laughs> okay. So I just kind of take a damp brush and blend out these hard lines. On the outside of I'm the going face. towards the outside, not towards the inside of the okay. face. If you did go in towards the face, face, no big deal. Nobody's gonna notice, it's not a problem. And then I'm actually going to take a little bit of the yellow. Oh, uh, Kristen asked, what are the different types of brushes? I'm strictly using a round six and a round two today. So that's what I'm going to refer, refer to during this video. If you want to know more about different types of brushes, we have a beginner series on our YouTube channel that goes over materials, and you can take a look at that. Also about the wet on wet blending. Also wet on wet blending. Any techniques, really, you can take a look at that series. I actually wanted to mention my favorite technique to watch develop was on the beginner series when you first taught how you could practice the wet on wet with the, the circles. The circles. That's a good one. That if you guys haven't mind. seen that. <laughs> I'm so glad. It did because you came to me like the day after and you're like, I'm editing that and it's so cool. It's such a pretty <laughs> transition. It is. And it, it literally blows my mind every time I watch it. It's why watercolor is the best. It's incredible. It's the best. Okay. So now I, I grabbed a little bit of the lemon yellow because I want to have some strong yellow kind of around the edge of this owl also. Just because I like pops of color personally. And so um, that's also why I like to work with liquid watercolors because they're usually very saturated in color and very vibrant. So I'm just going to take this yellow around here. And then on the top of the owl, it's a little bit darker on the head here. So I'm going to drop in some color on that top part. I just love their little faces. I know. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I feel pretty good. The biggest thing to remember is when you're doing that ring around their face, try not to have a super thick, dark line. Just try and blend it out if that's what's happening to you. And blending is just taking a damp brush that doesn't have any color on it and like kind of um, not scrubbing, but kind of just working back and forth in an area to smooth out a line and transition it out. So now we're gonna move on to the face. And so I want you to switch to a round two. And what we're gonna start with is we are gonna start putting in the shadows on the face. So how we make something seem three dimensional is we have to put um, shadows in there and then what is going to be closest to us is usually highlighted and then what's farther away is that's where the shadows and the values come in. So if you want your face to be three-dimensional or any object you need to have shadows in there so things can stick out and then things can recede. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna pick up some gray 
And to get gray, you're just basically gonna take a damp brush and pick up a little bit of black and add some water to it, and that's gonna make it gray. And I'm gonna go on either side of this beak. Yep, <laughs> beak. Put in that gray shadow, and then I'm gonna blend it out. So just using my damp brush, I'm blending out. And I'm gonna go not all the way to the rim of where we did that color, but um, just, I, there's not like a strong one. I don't want to say like, you know, like a quarter of an inch out because I don't feel like that's going to be true for everybody. Basically, you just want to have the darkest part right around the, the beak and then transition out from there. And because we blend, sometimes the dark that we initially laid down gets lost. So you have to do another layer. That's fine, totally normal in watercolor. Don't stress that out if you blend out your dark. I do it all the time. It really just adds depth and value anyway. A Joyce asked if her painting will flatten as it dries. So um, with watercolor, if you have a lot of uh, water and paint going on, sometimes your paper will start to bend and warp. That's totally normal, especially with the type of paper we're using. So you can do a couple of things. You can either tape down all of the sides and then untape it when it totally dries and then that way it will dry more flat. Or after it dries completely, sometimes what I do is I like put it under a stack of books or you can like iron the back to, to try and uh, flatten it. I've done all of them. Or you can get um, sometimes like a thicker paper that's 100% cotton will not bend and warp as easily. You can find that on Let's Make Art. You can find that on letsmakeart.com. Okay. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do the little kind of, oh, I didn't outline that in mine. That's okay. There's like a little bit of feathers right here. I didn't either. What are, They're just what are little. The odds? They're yeah, it's like where the direction of a feather is coming this way on the face and the direction is coming this way and they kind of meet. Like little tufts. So it's like little tufts right in the middle. So it's just a little bit of dashed kind of zigzaggy lines that's just light. And it just gives us a little bit of that kind of feather texture. And then I'm going to do it under the beak as well. And just like what I was saying, we want it to be clear that the feathers are coming over the beak. So we are putting a little bit of shadow on the beak itself, but it should be lighter than the gray on the side of it. Does that make sense? So it's gonna be like, what's behind the beak is gonna be darkest, then the beak is gonna be middle, and then this like feathery nose part should just be white. And that should be what's on the lightest part because that's the very top part of it. And then if you look at the eyes, um, around the eyes, there's like an area and we're gonna put brown behind there, kind of a combination of brown and gray. So that's what I'm gonna kind of fill out now. And remember these lines, especially when it comes to like shading an area, they're just general ideas. So don't feel like you have to color those in exactly and be done. Basically, you just want the transition to be smooth. So if you have to go out a little bit further than that to have a smoother transition, that's fine. And we're not gonna do the eyeballs just yet. That's gonna be um, a detail step. And that's because I like my eyes to be sharp and we don't want any chance of things bleeding or running together and for that, to make sure that doesn't happen, we gotta make sure this area is totally dry. Sorry, I'm just like working on other areas. Liza, I hope I said that right, from YouTube wanted to know if you used a photo for inspiration for the owl. So usually when I'm doing these projects, I look at multiple photos for inspiration because I don't know exactly what an owl looks like. So most of the time I have multiple photos up and I'm looking at them and then I 
paint the original from there and then I get do the outline from there and that's what the projects are. So most of the time it's multiple photos and then that's a that's a good question too because if you guys ever want to like paint your own projects and that kind of stuff then it's great to have multiple photos as reference. Oh Brock, Brock commented he said butcher trays and round twos and round sixes are back in stock. Sweet. Yay! 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 That takes a pause second because we were out of stock for like a month or two a long time quite a while quite a while okay thanks brock thanks for letting us know i'll make an announcement tomorrow fabulous okay i'm just doing another layer kind of around the nose and the eyes and if you accidentally like paint in the eyeball not a big deal because we're going to go over it in black anyway But it's through this like soft, subtle shading that we really kind of like make our paintings more realistic and kind of elevate them. And a lot of times it's just like soft hints of lines or soft hints of value here and there. I'm just gonna darken this a little bit. Okay. Okay, great. I feel really good about my face. Fabulous. Okay, we are going to move on. That was step three. We're halfway done with this painting. You guys are doing awesome. So now we are going to move on to step four and we are going to work on those tail feathers. So a couple things to keep in mind on the outline. I kind of like, like chunked off some areas because there's almost like stripes on the tail now because the feathers are layered the stripes are not going to line up perfectly and you do want kind of a area in between like a, a white part in between these stripes so we know that they're on different layers if we did like if i just took my black paint and like went like this and try to do all of them at once it's not going to look as realistic because since they're different layers they're not perfectly lined up so <laughs> Brock said, never mind. Okay, so. <laughs> now, um, this is kind of a willy-nilly area too. So if you did put your stripes in exactly, don't stress about it. Um, but I'm just gonna start with some, a, a mixture of my black and brown. So it's like a really dark brown. And those chunked areas, I'm gonna start to put in. But I'm not gonna go all the way to the next line i'm going to leave a little thin white line in between and that's because we want to leave that highlight in there and you can see these aren't perfectly lined up i'm kind of just going for it because that's how i like to live my life how's that on the edge oh, oh. <laughs> who said that so there's some up here Molly, how are you doing? I haven't even checked in yet. Well. You're doing great. My owl looks a little chilly, like he's kind of cold. But well, how, what? His shoulders oh. are Oh, <laughs> like, how does an owl look cold? Maybe he's not sure to how to answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think he looks great. Oh, well, thanks. And when we put in those finishing little areas, it's gonna look nice. The thing with animals that everybody needs to remember um, especially if you're new to watercolor is they look so funky until like the very last step so don't give up halfway through a painting because you will most likely give up almost every time because they look so funny and that's just how it is it's just it takes time it takes time to put in layers and get out values and put in the details so don't stress about it So along with going in and putting in these chunky parts, I'm also kind of reestablishing my shadows, especially because there are some that might have blended out a lot. Winging it 
Laura, <laughs> yes. Molly, I feel like you really missed an I, opportunity. I'm working, like, I just don't know where to put them. It's the pressure. It's the pressure of knowing that she's supposed to come up with these yeah. puns, that she's like, where do I say I this? I have a fan club. Jenny, you do. Jenny Ryan's my fan club. That's Jenny Ryan loves your puns. You know, Jenny Ryan's so good at puns. Whenever she also, like, posts on... She like puts her art up on our Facebook group and yes. almost every time she has this great pun to go along with her <laughs> painting. So great. I love it so much. Molly, you have comp, no, I'm just kidding. It's not a competition. Sorry, I There's guess- There's room for everybody to make puns. I guess I'm just not as talented as you guys. Talented. Talented. <laughs> Molly, yes. Okay. That's a home run. <laughs> home run right there. So I put in my really dark browns. Now I'm gonna put in my light browns kind of going on either side of the dark areas. And you might be like, Sarah, I'm not entirely sure where to put this. I don't, it doesn't, it doesn't totally matter because there are so many layers of feathers and every feather is different. You just kind of want to make sure that you have the idea or hint that there are darker parts on the feathers and there are lighter parts on the feathers. That's really all we're trying to communicate. So don't stress out, just go for it. Oh, my son. my son keeps noticing you You say, so don't stress out about it a lot. I do say that a lot. <laughs> I, life lesson. Life lesson right there. Well, it's important because, like, if you're not comfortable with something, you're so scared. You're so scared that you're going to mess it up or it's just not going to come out how you want it to. And so you just kind of, like, and the more stressed out you get, I think the more, like, hard you get on your painting and then you sometimes can't even see your painting because you're so afraid of making a mistake and I just don't want you guys to feel that way because painting is just fun. It's a creativity damper. It is a creativity damper. Stresses. Don't let it get you. She can't stress that enough. I can't stress that enough. Molly, <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank I you for being here today, <laughs> Molly. Just thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for being here today. That's from the Princess Diaries, in case you guys don't know. Lots of princess movies. Is it? Well, Princess references. Bride, princess, princess, princess Diaries. Movie. Oh, oh, princess movie, princess references tonight. I get it. I get what you're saying. Okay. So you can still see that I'm leaving kind of some white uh, areas in between my feathers. I've been kind of ignoring the other side of my feathers here, the ones that kind of come out to a V, so I'm gonna give them a little bit of love. Ta -ta -ta. <laughs> Michael, that's my husband, in case you guys are wondering. Michael, he says, that's one superb owl. A super bowl. <laughs> Super, super superb owl. owl. Super bull. God dang it, Michael. Michael. I love you. I love He's you. A good guy. With some crazy hair today. Oh, yeah. Uh, he said that you told him he looked like he was 17. <laughs> Just like, I feel like maybe 17 year olds <laughs> don't care about their hair. As much. <laughs> You're like, maybe teenagers don't care about their appearance, and that's how he was looking today. I'm sorry, Michael. <laughs> That's fine, Molly. It's just my husband. You see how it's just I my look. partner in life. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Molly's throwing shade. Molly, calm down. Okay. I have not seen the new Little Mermaid. Kristen asked me. I want to see. I it. I want to see it. I did just see the new Spider Man. I want to see the Mary Poppins. Oh, I saw Mary Poppins. Was it was it cute. Good? Yeah, I liked it. Emily Blunt. I love Emily Blunt. Married to. That guy from The Office. Jim. 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 What's his real name? Jim Halpert. I don't know that. John. John. Kirk. It starts with a K. Is it D? Is that Something it? like that. Okay. So I'm kind of, I've been kind of blending things out that I'm kind of losing my stripes a little bit. So I'm going to go back and put them back in with just some black. Don't be afraid to do multiple layers, you guys. Sometimes you gotta. Sometimes you lose that color that you wanted to keep. 
painting is all about it's like a fashion statement. It's all about the layers. It is about the layers. I'm not as deep as you are. <laughs> I'm just feeling really Molly was feeling very <laughs> what's that word? Uh, philosophical. philosophical. Yes. She's like it's like a fashion statement. <laughs> Close. Classic Molly. Okay. So now what I'm kind of doing is I'm going to just slightly blend out these white ones so they're not as thick and then they're not as maybe bright because sometimes if you leave the highlights too thick and too bright they actually become distracting and they take away from your painting. So my highlights on this are a little bit too thick so I'm just going to take my damp brush and just spread out the color just a little bit but I don't want to overwork it because I still want there to be a lighter value in there. So it's really just like spreading a little, spreading a little bit of color on there so it's not a blinding white. Chris, Chris Kinski. That can't be right. Chris Kinski? John Chris Kinski? John Krasinski. Krasinski. Not Chris Kinski. <laughs> Maybe I'm just saying it wrong. She probably typed it right and I'm just... <laughs> Adding extra <laughs> sounds. You're butchering it. I'm butchering it, and Molly. That's a stretch. No, we have a butcher tray palette. It is not a stretch. Thank you. See, Brock doesn't give me that kind of support at home. <laughs> <laughs> Tender, <Brock. laughs> okay. So I feel pretty good about my my tail feathers. I have kind of like a rhythm going where it's the dark where it's the shadow we have color and then it's the highlight and then it goes back in and it it's going to kind of have that rhythm to it and that's what we want because we want to say this is a layer this is a layer this is a layer um, it doesn't have to have that same rhythm on every single feather because some of them are going to blend out more than others some of them are closer together than others and that is okay that's what you have to keep in mind every owl is different so don't feel like it has to be perfect across the board between everyone. Suzanne says that Brock does that because he's jealous of your pun talents. Thanks, Suzanne. Suzanne, thank you. He is, for sure. I hear him talking about it. I mean. Okay, and I'm just adding a little bit of yellow in here on my tail feathers. Because again, I like pops of color. I do have pops of yellow on this other part. So I just put some in there. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. And then I'm gonna do this other part right here, this like bottom left section on this feather, I mean on this owl that we've kind of ignored. And what I'm going to do here is I'm gonna start with a really dark color at the top because I wanna make it clear that this part of the bird is underneath these feathers that are on top here. So just this little V that I kind of have outlined I'm going to put that dark color in and that was really dark but that's okay and I'm just going to blend it out and I'm going to introduce some brown in there so it's not just gray but I want this one to be darker and a little bit different in texture. Wow I love that. Do you? Yeah. Thank you. It just like Things are getting, ex uh, not that this hasn't been exciting, <laughs> but things are getting exciting. Things as are getting far exciting. As this owl is concerned. And the reason why we kind of want it to look different than what's on here and what's on here is we want to make it clear that it's kind of a different um, surface going on. I mean, birds, when they're like closed up together, there are <laughs> like the wings, wings, the wings brought in. There's so many different layers and textures going on. And so I just want to make it clear this part is underneath this part and it's different than this part. So it's going to have a different feel to it. So I'm going to go darker in value and it's not going to have this same kind of um, spotting or texture. It's going to be more just a transition of color. And then down here, I'm going to put some dark down here too, because these are also tail feathers, but they're underneath. And I don't want to do too much detail on them either. So it's just like, here's a hint of something. Oh, uh, Joyce asked if they can see it from the top. Can we get a top cam view? Is it on top cam? It is on. I can go side. Do, do you want maybe a side view, Joyce? Can you get me on the side? I can. Okay. Maybe try that. 
This is also delayed, so maybe. Sure. Maybe what she's seeing is different from what we're doing currently. Okay. Stay. Oh, I don't know what we're on now. That's fine. We'll switch back and forth. And then um, I've kind of left this area bare up here. I shouldn't have done that. Your feather should continue all the way up to this colorful part. So I'm just going to fill that in really quick. I'm going to do some stripies. Is the stay comment for the camera angle? Yeah, but I wasn't sure at which angle. Okay. Yeah, that's looking, that's looking really, that's looking good. <laughs> okay. How are you doing, Molly? That looks uh, good. <laughs> I would just do a little bit darker right here. Okay. I was trying to shoot for that, but I like, I just needed, it was getting really wet, I think. Oh yeah. Just try maybe doing straight black too. Ah, uh, yes. That's And then I just, want. just blend that out so it transitions with the brown. I will try to do that. Oh, okay, she likes the top view. Top view. <laughs> Keenan, can you be better at what you're doing, please? <laughs> I think what happened was I switched right as they commented to the top view. So that that's, I switched back to the side. That's what I was saying. I'm like, wait, there's a delay. Maybe it is on the right angle. <laughs> okay. I'd really just like to apologize to everyone. Keenan, you're doing great. Okay. <laughs> okay. So. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start putting in a little bit of the shadow on the like belly and other side of the wing of the bird. And to do that, you're just going to need a gray. So just get some water, get some gray that you've kind of swished out from your black. And where the wing meets the belly, you're going to put that gray color in there. And then you're going to blend out because we don't want a hard line. We're just going to use water and blend that out. And then voila, it's like, oh, there's a wing on the other side of that belly that's kind of coming out from there. And that's why it's dark, that's why it's shadowed, is because um, the belly's in front of the wing and the ring, wing is actually like receding into the body. And so that's why we want that shadow there. <laughs> Was that funny? I just... <laughs> <laughs> Molly just likes to laugh. Let me do things. <laughs> I will. I will never say no to someone laughing at what I say. Okay. So that's really all you need to do for this other wing here is just kind of put in that shadow of like, there's something on this other side. Just like that. And then what I like to do is like this brown color. I'm just going to take water and spread it around right here on this, around this belly because again, I like soft, I don't like super hard lines. So sometimes if that line is too hard and I wanna communicate something else, I just take that color and spread it just a little bit to soften it. And a lot of the times it's because feathers are layered. And so like the belly right here is a bunch of white feathers layered and this is brown feathers layered, but when they intersect, then it turns to like a light brown because it's those, it's like dark feathers with like white on top. And so it actually is kind of more of a tan. And so it's usually not like a perfectly clean break. So that's why I kind of like to mess up that line a little bit like that. Okay. And we can do the foot now too. I'm just going to, it's basically the same thing that we did with the tummy. Just start with like a dark color, right where that foot meets that, the body. And then spread it out using water. If it bleeds, if it gets runny, totally normal. Sometimes I just leave it when things bleed or sometimes you can take a paper towel and just suction it up if you can. That's what feet are supposed to do. What? Run. <laughs> <laughs> Molly, that was my favorite one you've done tonight. Oh, I was not expecting that. 
so good. Expecting. Well, Expecting. I'll guys. Okay. So good. Just think. Thank you again for being here. Okay. <laughs> So I have my little feet. The, the feet are fairly simple. It's just like uh, basically one color. I'm gonna do the nails a darker black or the talons, I guess. Is that the right word? Talons, yes. Okay, great. <laughs> you just said it without saying yes or no. And I'm like, wait. I need answers. Okay. So there's that. Okay. Now we are ready for step five. We're like almost there. We have one more step after this. Cause I, Yay. yes, step five. We're gonna do the speckled part of the belly. I'm really excited for this part. This is a really great part because I feel like adding this it actually really brings your owl to life. So if you notice on this uh, owl, they have speckles on their belly and on their wing too. Now when we do these speckles we're going to do some that are done in a light gray and then some that are done in a black and the reason for that is the same one I was talking about with the layering of feathers. Because the feathers are layered some of the speckles are covered with other white feathers which makes them gray. So let's start with the gray. I'm going to just pick up some gray on my, I'm using my round two and then just on the belly I'm going to start doing some light gray and it's random don't feel like you have to do it a pattern they don't all need to be the same size um, because that's really just not true to how we see it in nature they're different sizes they're different distances from each other the layering works differently so really just kind of like play with it and just go don't stress I think there was a sound effect with these Oh, was there? What was the sound effect? Do you remember? Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. I really don't remember much from that it was tutorial. Because I remember timing it while you painted. Oh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna switch over to black now. I did some gray, and then you're just gonna like. Was that it? Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just some black in there. Oh, I'm so sad I covered his shoulder up. With what? What do you mean? Well, his wing's up, and so I can't do his neck. That's yeah, you okay. can. Still put black there. I did it. Okay. You can do black If you dots. say so, Sarah. You can't. Molly, this is your painting. You can make it however you want. That's right. Okay, there's my speckles. And I'm going to do some on the wings themselves. Like on the, like on the, on the wing. I said it right. I'm just winging it. I'm just winging it. <laughs> Did someone already say that someone one? Someone said that one. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, it's okay. Not original. You can ask me to leave if you want to. <laughs> Molly, can you leave now? <laughs> <laughs> you messed up one pun. Do we need to call Brock? Do we need to call Brock? <laughs> okay. So I'm also going to do the dots kind of on the back part of the head too. Kind of coming up here or the speckles, I guess, would be a better word. <laughs> and never be afraid to just take a damp brush and just kind of like let things get a little bit messy and blendy and bleh. I love it. It just softens. All, that's all it does is it's just softening those hard lines. You don't have to do that if you like your your this area nice and hard and tight then don't do this but sometimes I think it's nice to soften some areas okay now I did my speckles I feel good about them I'm gonna move on to the eyes and remember we want the area around the eyes to be totally dry so if they are not dry yet, don't do this part yet. Wait for your face to dry before you do this. So I'm gonna go in where the eyeball is and you'll see that there's a tiny white circle in that eyeball and we are gonna leave that at first. Eventually we're gonna smooth it out, but there is going to be a soft glare on the eyeball. So I'm gonna avoid that, put the eyeball in And 
and they're kind of poking out from either side of the beak. So we want that black eyeball to go all the way to that beak or like the, the front of that face that's coming out. Now we're leaving these highlights white, but we're gonna go back and we're going to spread them out because I feel like like this, those white highlights are too white that it couldn't, it's not reading as um, realistic as it can because of how white those are. Now I don't wanna blend them out yet because if I try to blend them out while this black is still wet, then I would just lose that white highlight completely. It would, it would even out to an even black and I don't want that. So we're gonna wait till the eyeballs dry and then we'll go back in and make those more of a gray. Okay, now let's move on to step six, which is the post, post and details. So um, the post, pretty, it's, it's not too bad. You're just gonna take your line or two and you're just going to follow these lines that we have here, just like that. And then you're gonna take water and uh, blend out some of these lines. Now when I'm blending, I'm leaving some areas still wet. I mean white, sorry. Leaving some of them still white. What? <laughs> and then you can just, you can go back in. The post is it doesn't have to be super detailed. You can make this into whatever you want it to be. If you want it to be a tree branch or a <laughs> chimney. Or <laughs> dead animal. A dead animal. <laughs> They have talons. They gotta eat animals. Yeah. Fun fact, they mostly eat shrews, mice, moles, stuff like that. What are shrews? They're like blind little animals with this like weird octopusy looking thing on them. Nuh -uh. It's, it's weird. They're they're related to mice. They live they're under the ground mostly. Sick. But they they're they're cute. I gotta like Google. Them. I gotta Google them. And this is just all we're doing for the post. Not super detailed. <laughs> and that's because I feel like sometimes you just need to have the general idea of something that's there and not overwork an area. And I like having the owl be the center of my painting, especially this, this part here. So, and then always the very last step, it's, it's just the best idea to stop painting for a second and look at your owl and see if there's any other adjustments you need to make. So I'm gonna go back in here and play with this color and the wings a little bit more. I just feel like I want some darker areas, especially maybe around here. And so I'm just gonna go back and put them in. And somebody, sometimes people ask me like, how do you know when a painting is done? Sometimes, well the first thing you should do before you know a painting is done is take a step back from it and see if there's any areas that are distracting to you. Um, or if there's any areas that seem bare. You just wanna make sure that your painting, every element feels like it's from the same world, which means the values kinda line up, all of that stuff. So the best way to know when a painting is done is when you step back from it and you say, nothing's really distracting me, there's nothing that's sticking out that I need to fix, and it all feels like it's from the same world. So usually when that happens, when I step back and I'm like, okay, yeah, all of that feels pretty good, then I'm done. And that, that kind of finality um, is sometimes scary to people where they just keep on working, on that, working and working and working. And sometimes when you do that, you can overwork your painting. So I highly suggest just leaving it alone for a bit and then coming back to it because coming back with fresh eyes is extremely helpful. So, and of course, always, if you feel like you're leaving too early, then that's not a problem because you can just come back to it and keep on working on it. Which you absolutely can with these paintings. If, if you, I could come back and work on this tomorrow. It, things might not blend out as easy, but it doesn't have to be kind of a one sitting type deal. I'm just kind of putting some of these layered lines back in. like that. While we're doing this, I just want to mention if you want to know fun facts about owls, 
YouTube true facts about owls, you will not be disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> he is the best narrator of anything animals. I don't care what that British true guy does. True facts. Good to know. Nice. Some of them are have bad words. <laughs> Some of them have bad words. Be aware. They are very honest. Good to know. Keenan. I'm just going to have you, whenever we paint an animal, I'm going to have you watch one of those videos and on the animal. On hand. Yes. And yes. just be ready. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. My wings feel pretty good. I'm liking them. I'm going to make the backside a little bit darker. Yeah, okay. like how you brought in that darkness. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I'm going to go back to my eyeballs. They're mostly dry. They're actually very much dry. And I'm just going to take my damp brush. There's no paint on this. And using the paint that's already there, I'm just going to spread it over that highlight. Just one or two strokes. And it's just to soften that white. So there still should still be a highlight there, but not blinding white. And then I'm actually going to darken the brown around the black a little bit, just to give it a little bit more depth. The darker you make something of the value, it's going to seem farther away. So if you want something to seem like it has more depth to it, you need to put in a little extra value on there. And as always, you have to name your animal. It's just a really great thing to do. Because as you paint animals, they're gonna form their own expressions and give them little personalities. Like I feel like adding that dark kind of gave mine like a serious look, which I'm okay with. This is a serious owl. A wise owl. A wise owl. I feel like my the one I did in the pre-tutorial was like a party owl. And I feel like this one is like, the dad of that. <laughs> <laughs> a little bulkier. A what? More of a bulky owl, like the dad. He's a little yeah. larger usually. A little larger, a little more serious, and a little yeah. bit like, what is my son up to? Why can't you be responsible? You it's know. Being outrageous. Outrageous. Oh. Yes, Molly. So great. <laughs> so I think I'm going to name him Richard. Richard. Is that a serious enough name, you think? Richard? I don't think so. No? Okay. All I can hear in my head is like a movie quote. And by quote, I mean I can hear the wife yelling, Richard! <laughs> From what? <laughs> <No. laughs> <laughs> Holly! <laughs> but I can hear it in my head. Okay. That counts for something. What about Sullivan? Oh. You know what? That's my... Back, back in the day, he was Sully. Sullivan. You know what? That's great. I have a... Uh, I have family with the last name Sullivan. Uh. My grandpa Sullivan's a very sweet, soft soul, but he comes across as very serious. So that's perfect. Perfect. Sullivan, I love it. That's awesome. Molly, what's your owl like? Is it as serious as Sullivan? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> My owl looks a little dense, so... <laughs> Sorry if you have this name out there. <laughs> <laughs> the his name is like Georgie or something. Like Georgie. That. Yeah. Georgie. That's a great name. Yeah. Okay, are we ready to hold it up, Oliver? I that's what want, I was gonna I say. I didn't want to say I, it doesn't have to be a boy. Oliver. It doesn't have to be a boy. Yeah. I actually don't know the differences between male and female barn owls. Maybe they look totally different. <laughs> Maybe you can find no out idea. on the true facts about owls. I should have watched the true facts about owls. Molly, thank you for telling me everything I've done wrong. <laughs> I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Julian. Somebody has a Julian. How were how word? How word? How world, Gloria? That's a good one. Okay, let's hold it up. He looks so good. Okay. So to the close up here. Let me just uh, get it ready for you. Keenan. It was ready. I just had ready. to make sure the audio was good. <laughs> right, Molly, I feel up, like your going. owl's covering my owl. Thanks. No, the it's owls just... are equally shown. <laughs> Look at those owls. 
Look at Sullivan. Sullivan. Georgie. And Georgie. Sullivan and Georgie. You guys, Beautiful. good job. This project was so fun. It had more steps than usual. So you guys did great hanging in with us. And I kind of jumped around a lot on this painting. So thank you for your patience. You guys are so great. Um, if you painted this, share it. We really want to see it. It doesn't matter if you're a beginner. It doesn't matter if you've been painting for five years. We don't care. We just really love art. So we have a Facebook group called Let's Make Art Together. Um, share it there if you're not comfortable sharing it on your mainstream personal page. Personal page. I don't know what you would say. Um, but I can't wait to see them. The owls that I have seen are awesome. All of them have personality. All of them are different. And I think that's the best thing about sharing your work is showing that we're not here to make carbon copies of what we paint. We're here to put our own perspective on every single painting and every single one is gonna look different. So don't be afraid to make it yours and don't be afraid to share it. That's what we wanna see. Um, next week, we are doing our Snowy mountains. Ooh. Ah. So great, so much fun. Just a couple colors with this one. And I love this project because we really let the white of the paper work as our snow, which is a, a really beautiful thing about watercolor. And one of my favorite parts is letting the white of the paper do the work for us. I'm really all about other things doing work for me. I feel like I say that a lot. <laughs> so um, you guys are really great. Thank you for letting Brock sub last week. I think he did an awesome job and I'm feeling much better. So I appreciate what a supportive community this is and I appreciate you guys. I think you guys are the best. And I think that's all I need to say. That's all I know of. Yes. That's all she wrote. That's all I wrote. That's all I wrote. <laughs> okay, bye you guys.